How long do your backup extenders need to be on your Enove split connections? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. We set up the Enove split at the park near my house after doing our experiment at CRG with the 200 meter where we cut the line. The problem we had at that experiment was the pink tube section, the nylon stretchy webbing, had no backup loops. And we had our typical 50 meter backup with our five meter extenders. And so we theorized we either screwed up or since pink tubes stretches so much that we need a longer extender. So we did some experiments in the park and we mixed up some Feather Pro, Pink Tube, and Feather Pro so we could compare how our backups were acting with our extender lengths. So watch this as we explore how long our extenders need to be for what type of webbing we're using in our 50 meter segmented high lines. In case you're new to the Enof split idea, this soft shackle, the red one, is crisscrossed and we have other videos showing how to do that which allows us to put this other soft shackle or a metal quick link in there that's connected so it can't move in either direction. The backups are connected to each other. These two pieces are connected and these are all connected together. Everything's redundant and if something were to fail, then you only lose that one section and you only fall a roughly around eight or 10 meters when you have a mainline failure. We did a a, an experiment at CRG's 200 meter line to explore the difference between a continuous uh, line and an Enof split line. But this is the technique. This right here is an extender which allows the backup to also be 50 meters long. This is a 50 meter piece which also has this on the other end over there. We'll explain all that in detail uh, further on. Okay, so we have two different kinds of webbings here. We have Feather Pro with a spider backup. This is just the extender. Then we have Pink Tube with spider backup. Spider is spider silk is a very low stretch webbing. Very, very low stretch. It's vectric. This is nylon. Stretchy, stretchy nylon. Okay? Right now you can observe that we have lots of loops in our pink tube backup. This is a 50 meter piece as well but it has a five meter long extender on the other end. What we discovered when we did our CRG 200 meter experiment is that we didn't have any backup loops. And we have a theory that this stretches significantly at two or three or four kilonewtons more so than the Feather Pro does. Which means we had the loops we wanted for the Feather Pro but we lost them for the nylon pink tube. So we're going to tighten it up here in the park and explore how much extension we may need in order to have uh, a proper loops in our backup for stretchier webbing. Hi guys. We tensioned it and got it to three kilonewtons. And about two kilonewtons is what I'll put most high lines at. But this demonstrates what we experienced at CRG. If you look down there, I do have control over this backup, so that's kind of irrelevant. I have the tail up here. But you'll notice the pink tube down there has no backup loops. But the next section of Feather Pro at the very end has loops. So we're at the pink tube connection here, and you can see that it's being pulled over here. Not too much, there is, oh, too much. <laughs> uh, once we got to about one and a half kilonewtons, I saw the backup loops disappear, and once we got to three, they were completely tight. Um, this is still loose from, uh, the Feather Pro doesn't stretch as much, but when you get on a line, those backup loops look quite loopy, but once you get on, this is the high line, you would end up losing about half of those loops. So those, I don't, I like the five meters that we did for that. As far as this goes, when I get on this, this is already tight-ish. Come follow me over here. This is not too tight. It's obnoxiously tight, like not impossible to walk, but this gets a lot tighter the more force I'd put on this. If we put this to five kilonewtons in order to walk this in this park, um, this backup would be really tight. It'd be pulling on our connections really funny. So 
think the theory is we're going to have to find out how long our extender needs to be on stretchy material if you're going to mix. Not even if you're going to mix. You're just going to use pink tube as the main and anything for the backup. We would have to discover what the best number is. If you've already done some research on it, please in the comments below add what lengths work for your extenders depending on the material that you're using. So we added an additional five meter piece to our backup. So now we have a total of 10 meters of Dyneema here. This stuff breaks at seven-ish thousand pounds of force. Don't know kilonewtons off the top of my head. This is padded. I do like padding that when I girth hitch because I found if both components are padded, which this side is not, then I get almost full strength for what a sew and loop is when we uh, connect it to the sew and loop of the backup. But we go into that in detail in other videos, but padded on both sides we found to be very important. We will slack snap all of this in another episode to show you how and what is important. This stuff is full strength. This is amazing. I don't pad it, uh, but I do tape the crap out of it on site. This is the back up here, connected directly to that soft shackle. Extra this, and then our five meters goes over there. So our line is reset up, and you can see that has perfectly good backup loops. And you can see down there that we have pretty good backup loops. The last section, we didn't play with our tail yet, but we did uh, untape the extender so it could slide evenly. And we have all of this extra. Therefore, this is too long. So, I would say probably half of this distance, maybe. Um, let's see here. Let's play with this. Uh, nope, you need more than half. I could not fold this in half, which is one option is you can come through here and connect both loops to that point there. This right here is the uh, sewing loop padded and the Dyneema loop padded. And that gives us a really, really strong um, breaking strength. And that's what I was referring to earlier. However, it is better to have something a bit too long than too short. It's really hard to fix it. This is about um, less than two meters is my wingspan. And if I took a wingspan out of this, right there, I could tape this right here, and tape it here, and tape it here, and tape it here, and get it out of the way so your foot doesn't get stuck on it, and then you can make this exactly what you want after it's rigged. It's a real pain in the ass to fix this if it's too short after it's rigged. You would have to clip a rope to this, Add a 60 meter rope to the other side, unconnect the soft shackle, and it, you're, it's, it's not good. This is uh, much better to just tape some excess if you're not sure. Or you can go to the park like we are right now and figure out exactly how much this specific 50 meter needs and always leave the backup taped to it. So then you can always just connect it to your other high lines and super good enough. <laughs> How's it feel, Matt? A uh, hundred times better. A hundred times better. Oh. Think lightly. Uh, therefore, you shouldn't walk slack lines with backup loops? In the park. In the park. <laughs> so we kept bottoming out when we were slack lining on this. So now we have 4.3 kilonewtons on this. You can see here that I um, taped about an, a wingspan. So maybe to less than two meters. I taped here to here, which keeps it out of the way, but we, at 4.3 kilonewtons, lost our backup loops. We have no more backup loops. So you have to kind of have it planned out how much force you're gonna have on this when you go highlining. Um, I might just keep these two extenders or make one single long 10 meter for this, and then just tape it based on what I will need based on the high line I use it on. Because sometimes on 300 meter lines, you want the whole line to have four kilonewtons before you get on. And it only peaks to 4.5 kilonewtons, whereas short lines start low and peak high. Because there's not as much stretch until you whip. But anyways, um, I think we're going to have to retape this to accommodate our uh, dangerous backup loops in the park. 
Oh, that's much smarter. That's way better. How's it feel? Great. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's a good system. It's just going to take some tinkering. So let's collaborate and find out what works for your lines. And maybe we'll make a chart on slackademics.com on how uh, long our extenders need to be depending on what webbing we're using. If you're using the Enov split, that means you're generally doing bigger lines. Bigger lines usually have a minimum of two kilonewtons standing tension and about four or five at the most. So something that works for that, right now this is at four kilonewtons. I could probably pull it in one meter. I will probably make a nine meter piece for my pink tube. But we can all work together and find out what works for all the webbing so we can have the perfect system. Slacklining sucks. Therefore, we should only go highlining. <laughs>